This is lesson five of unit nine. And in this lesson, we'll talk about uh, two special types of double replacement reactions. The first type is called an acid-base neutralization reaction. And this involves, as you might imagine, an acid and a base. So uh, we've introduced acids already, but as a review, an acid is a compound that begins with H, with hydrogen. And hydrogen is actually the active site of an acid. So here, for example, is your acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid, famous acid. Now, a base is a new compound, and a base is a compound that ends with OH, which is the hydroxide polyatomic ion, very important polyatomic ion. Now, anytime you put an acid with a base, what happens is you get two products, salt and water. This is a also a pretty famous reaction. Now let me show you how this is a double replacement reaction. The double replacement reaction comes in the uh, idea, remember that, let's do it with green here, that the methyl of the first compound replaces the methyl of the second compound, and the methyl of the second replaces the metal of the first. So now hydrogen, even though it's not a metal, it acts like a metal because it sits together with the group one elements. So hydrogen will replace sodium, sodium replaces hydrogen. So you'll notice here on the right side, sodium is now with chlorine. Sodium used to be with hydroxide. Uh, so it comes in and replaces hydrogen, and it takes the place of hydrogen. Now sodium is with chloride. And hydrogen takes the place of sodium. Now when hydrogen comes in here, what you get is you get yourself HOH. And HOH is just another way of writing water. So water is the other product, and that's how you get water. Salt, in this case, you may recognize sodium chloride as salt, but the salt is actually a general term for anything that comes from an acid and a base. That's the definition of salt. So hopefully you can see how this is a double replacement reaction. And uh, we're going to practice a few here in just a minute. Let's introduce the second type, which is <coughs> something called the formation of a precipitate. <coughs> Apologize. And a precipitate, first of all, is a solid that is formed from solution. So in this case, what you'll do is you'll begin with two aqueous solutions. Here you have aqueous, aqueous, and then you will form a solid as one of your products. So a picture of this will look something like this. You'll get two clear solutions, and when you mix them together, you'll get a white cloudy solution. That white cloudiness this stuff here will eventually settle to the bottom and form your solid. Essentially, you're forming a powder inside of two liquids. And the word precipitate can mean, uh, usually it means water precipitating from a gas, uh, from water vapor, but it can also mean a solid from a liquid. So, uh, hopefully you can see the idea of double replacement here as well. The silver comes in, replaces the sodium, the sodium comes in, replaces the silver, just like really in the, in the previous example. And you have silver teaming up with chlorine, as you see here, and you have sodium teaming up with nitrate, as you see here. So this is actually a very famous reaction performed all over nature, and it is what is responsible for cave formations, especially in the state of Missouri. So the uh, stalactites and the stalagmites and the cane formations come uh, through a precipitate. And the precipitate that happens is the one that essentially builds uh, these fine structures. The reaction, by the way, is calcium chloride, roughly, with sodium carbonate producing sodium chloride and then calcium carbonate. Here is your precipitate. This precipitate is a solid. Calcium carbonate is a solid. And that's what forms these stalagmites and these stalactites. And by the way, this is also the same way that uh, many organisms, sea organisms, accumulate hard shells is through this similar precipitation reaction. So precipitation reactions are very important. Uh, they are part of nature. Okay, let's go ahead and try some examples. So uh, we're asked to complete the following neutralization or precipitation reactions. Let's find out which one is neutralization and which one is precipitation. To find the neutralization one, look for an acid and a base, because neutralization <coughs> involves an acid and a base. So 
So the acid and base, hopefully, are here. Here's your acid, and here's your base. So the first one is a precipitation, uh, I'm sorry, a neutralization reaction. Now, in both of these, these are double replacement, so we will have the methyl replace a similar element, and we have this hydrogen replacing the methyl. So the first two essentially replace one another. Now here you have to be careful, because when bromine uh, is teamed up with magnesium, so let's think of the first product as magnesium coming in here. What we have is we have magnesium with bromine. However, we have to balance the charges when we're thinking about ionic compounds like this. In fact, in most of these cases, you have to think about balancing charges. So because magnesium has a charge of plus 2, bromine has a charge of minus 1. We need two bromines for each magnesium. Very important. Two bromines. Our second product is actually always going to be water. So because a neutralization reaction forms a salt and water, H2O. Now the water again comes when the H replaces the magnesium and you get yourself HOH on this side and HOH, another way written, is H2O. Okay, so let's uh, clean it up a bit and let's balance the equations. So now that we've written the products, let's go ahead and balance them. And to, in order to balance this, it looks like we would need a 2 in front of the HBr. And that gets us two hydrogens here, two more hydrogens here, four hydrogens. So how about two in front of here? And it gets us two oxygens, which balances. This equation is balanced. Let's also include the state symbols. Now, water we know is a liquid. The rest of these will actually be aqueous for these double replacement reactions. So this guy's aqueous. Acids, we said, are always aqueous. Bases and acids, we'll say for our purposes, are aqueous. And the salt will be an aqueous solution. And here is your neutralization reaction. This is neutralization. The second one, then, precipitation, involves sodium sulfide and silver nitrate. Same thing. The silver will come in and replace the sodium. The sodium will come in and replace the silver. This is a double replacement. So when the uh, <coughs> sodium comes in and teams up with the nitrate, let's write that one first. We have ourselves sodium and nitrate. We have to think about balancing the charges. Since sodium has a plus one charge, nitrate has a minus one charge. We just need one of each. So it is balanced as it's written. The second compound is between silver and sulfur. Now, we know that sulfur has a minus 2 charge. The question is, what is the charge of silver? Well, silver appears in the D block, so it may have a number of different charges. However, in here, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the charge it had in the compound on the reactant side. And in this case, it had a plus 1 charge because it's teamed up with one nitrate. So since silver has a plus 1 charge, we will need two silvers to balance each sulfur, and our product is Ag2S. Again, this is very important to be able to balance these charges on your product side. This is going to be the, uh, the place where you'll probably miss the points if you do miss the points. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of, uh, clean it up a bit. And here we are. Let's balance the equation. Looks like we have two sodiums on the left. Let's make sure we have two on the right. And looks like we have two nitrates now on the right. Let's make sure we have two on the left. And it should be balanced. State symbols will be very similar to the previous example. Uh, our precipitate is actually going to be solid. Now, you may not know that this is the precipitate. And we will go into how to find out it's a precipitate, but really there's a set of rules that have you memorize precipitates. And that's how we'll know. So that's your precipitate. The rest of them, as before, will be aqueous. So for these two types of reactions, what you have, essentially, you have a bunch of aqueous solutions mixing together. In the case of neutralization, you form water liquid and another aqueous. In the case of precipitation, you form a solid and everything else is aqueous. So this will conclude for us lesson 5 of Unit 9. Whoops.